Hey vinyl friends and vinyl community, it's Brian from Brian's Vinyl Records and this is my very first installment of Artist Spotlight. What is Artist Spotlight? Well, I'm going to pick an artist from my collection that I have several albums of. Maybe a whole collection, most likely not, but I want to highlight that artist and show you the records that I have from them. So, who do I pick for the first Artist Spotlight? Well, it's a no-brainer. It's one of my favorite bands. Probably my favorite band of all time. So stick around. I've got a large stack of records to show you from ACDC. Welcome back, vinyl friends. I am super excited to do this series. It was a suggestion from a friend of mine. I was trying to come up with some ideas for content for the site, for the YouTube page, and he suggested, well, why don't you just show records from your favorite artists or do something from decades? And I said, well, you know, that's a good idea. So here we are, and I thought I'd start off with my favorite band of all time, and that's ACDC. And I didn't realize until I pulled my stack out just how big the stack of ACDC records I have it are, is. It's crazy. So we're going to go through these. I'll try to be quick as I can, but I want to talk about them and all that kind of stuff. So we'll start right from the beginning. Hey, Australian High Voltage. This is the first ACDC album that was released, obviously in Australia. Did not come to the U.S. at the time. This was put out in 1974, I believe. This is a 1981 repress from New Zealand. Uh, really cool. I found this on eBay. Uh, picked it up. I think I paid like 15 bucks for it, which is a steal if you ask me. But um, kind of cool thing about this is this is called High Voltage, which is also the name of the first ACDC album in the United States, but it is not the same album. If we look at the back and the song tracks, you'll see that a lot of them are completely different from the actual album that was released in the United States. So what you get on here is kind of a mixture. Uh, some of the stuff that would end up on the United States High Voltage and a bunch of other stuff that would end up on a release called 74 Jailbreak that was released in the 80s. Um, so this is kind of cool. The songs on here that are not on any of the U.S. albums include Show Business and Love Song. So, uh, as well as uh, Stick Around, I don't think appears on any of the U.S. Uh, albums either. So, three of the songs on here uh, do not appear on U.S. record releases. So, that's always kind of fun to get. So, ACDC's High Voltage Australian Press is the first one. The second album is the second ACDC album released, Australia only. This one is called TNT. And this here is... Uh, I believe also a New Zealand repress, a real cool gatefold. This came uh, from 1981 repress. And this is going to be what we know in the United States as high voltage. Pretty much everything on here was released on high voltage with the exception of Rocker, which would be released later on Dirty Deeds, and the uh, School Days, which wasn't put out on any of the albums. So. Here you got it. This is ACDC's TNT Australian release. So that's a really cool find. I got this from a good buddy of mine who had an extra copy that he won off eBay. So I got it really, really cheap. I am super excited and very thankful for him for getting this for me. And now we get to what everybody knows as the releases here in the United States. And that is the original high voltage this is the 2003 repress of the album three remastered edition but um, sounds awesome so I can't go wrong here this is the first album you have songs like live wire high voltage you've got TNT where the big ones off here and of course it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll great album high energy ACDC high voltage first US release Ah, I mentioned this earlier. This is 74 Jailbreak, and the reason I have this um, 
lined up in here is because of the year 1974 and just because it has a whole bunch of you know tracks that were on the australian releases here uh the uh, the exception jailbreak here was released on the original australian version of dirty deeds which was not released in the united states until 1981 so this is 74 Jailbreak. I do believe that they put this out in 1984 in the United States. It's kind of a little compilation of, of songs that just never got released here. So that's this one. Uh, not This is probably my least favorite of the ACDC albums. I like the song Jailbreak, but the rest of them are they're just okay. Uh, it's just And it's short. It's uh, only five songs. It's an EP. So I, I rarely listen to this one. Uh, not that it's bad, it's just my least favorite of the ACDC releases. All right, this one came out in 1981 in the United States, but it was recorded back in 1976 and rejected by the record companies for some reason in the United States. It was released in the Europe and released in Australia, but it did not get a proper release in the United States until the explosion that was back in black. But this is a great album. Um, this has some great stuff. Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap, Ain't No Fun Waiting Around to Be a Millionaire, Squealer, all favorite songs of mine. And of course, everybody knows Big Balls. That's a classic ACDC tune that probably everyone has heard and don't realize it's maybe ACDC that does it. So ACDC's Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. This is an early release from the 80s. Um, very excited to have this. Next up. Let There Be Rock, 1977. ACDC is just starting to make some waves in the United States. Uh, they've been really big in Europe and, of course, Australia. And now in the United States, this is going to be the second album that has come out for them. And the reason being, they rejected the Dirty Deeds. So this is what came afterwards in 1977. This would be the follow-up in the United States to the High Voltage album. Um, just a real high-energy kick-ass raw sounding record here from ACDC you got the classics a uh, whole lot of Rosie you've got uh, go down doggy dog let there be rock problem child and my personal favorite from this album is called overdose uh, just a great tune and of course hell ain't a bad place to be is also found on this an awesome awesome album let there be rock now we get to my favorite of the Bon Scott era this is ACDC's Powerage and um, what can I say? This this album is a lot cleaner sounding from the, the uh, Let There Be Rock, but it's got some real kick-ass songs on here. Uh, the funny part is they turned in the album, and they turned it in with uh, eight songs on it, and the record company said, we don't hear a hit on this album. So they told them to go back in and record a hit, and that's when they wrote Rock and Roll Damnation, the first song on the album. And... It was a hit for them, you know. It was a good, a good song that got them some radio play, uh, but it was thrown together last minute to appease the record company, and that's what you get. But it's by far not the best song on this album. What's next to the moon? Down payment blues, riff raff, Sin City, uh, Gone Shooting, Kicked in the Teeth. I mean, this album front to back is one of their best that they've ever done. And it's my favorite album from the Bon Scott era. I do need to get a new copy because this cover is beat to crap. Um, but the, the vinyl sounds great, so I'm not complaining at this point. Awesome, awesome album. Up next, what many consider to be one of the best live albums ever released. ACDC's If You Want Blood. Now, I... Uh, when I first heard this live album, I wasn't sold completely on it uh, because I w I've never been a big live album guy. It's not been my thing. I love concerts. I love going to see concerts and all that. But live albums, they just never capture it for me as much. In recent years, after giving this much more listens, I really, really like this album. It's fantastic. There's just massive energy from the band in this. And you can't go wrong. Um, Riff Raff opens up this album, and it opens it up in a huge way. So if you want blood, you got it. A fantastic live album, ACDC, captures that Bon Scott era perfectly. This was also released in 1978. Highway to Hell. I don't think there's anyone who doesn't know this album, Highway to Hell. ACDC's first foray with Robert Mutt Lane, who went on to have fame with not just ACDC, but Def Leppard. 
and uh, of course Shania Twain. And here we go. This is uh, very commercial for ACDC. The raw edge of ACDC has kind of been toned down and you get a much more commercial appeal. It worked very well for them. They started gaining a lot of traction in the world and in the United States from this album. It's a fantastic, fantastic album. Obviously, the title track, Highway to Hell, Girls Got Rhythm, Walk All Over You, and my personal favorite ACDC song is on this album, and that's If You Want Blood, You've Got It. I just love that song. So this, this was what put them on the map. They were heading straight to the top after releasing this album. But unfortunately, it would be the last with Sir Bon Scott here. Bon would not uh, make it to the next record, uh, dying at an early age of alcohol poisoning. And if you want to believe some, he was left to die. But we won't get into that. ACDC's Highway to Hell, awesome, awesome album. The sound is quality. This is a 2003 reissue of the album. Um, I haven't found a good enough condition and low enough priced original of this but when I do I will probably buy it because I love it all right of course this is what brought ACDC to the masses back in black 1980 but uh, Bon Scott has passed away in February of 1980 and in a few months they're going to release this album with new lead singer Brian Johnson. Millions and millions of copies sold of this album, and rightly so. It is an awesome album front to back. There's not a song on here that I skip or want to skip when listening to this album. Shoot to Thrill, Hell's Bells, uh, Back in Black, You Shook Me All Night Long, uh, uh, Have a Drink on Me, Rock and Roll Ain't Noise Pollution. This is perfect as far as an album goes from uh, ACDC. And amazingly, it's the first album they released with a brand new singer. And this blew the band up. They were hitting the stratosphere. And this is one of the top selling albums of all time. So, can't go wrong. This is a repress uh, of the album. This is a 2003 remaster issue. Um, I'm looking for back in black from the 80s because i hear it sounds almost better than the repress which i, I find a little hard to believe because the with the remasters that they did in 2003 were absolutely fantastic but i i would love to get my hands on a original 1981 press or 1980 pressing of back in black because um i just like to have it and hear it so i'm looking for those and the follow-up now, the sad part about this, this did really well. This sold a, a few couple million copies. Um, it was considered a letdown from Back in Black because Back in Black sold so many copies. But this was a solid uh, follow-up to Back in Black. I, nobody, I think, was expecting them to have the exact same success as Back in Black, except for maybe the band themselves. But they got hurt on this album because the record company decided to put Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap out finally in the United States six months before this album was released to everyone. So you kind of had a little bit of an ACDC fatigue going on because of Back in Black and Dirty Deeds. And then all of a sudden, six months later, we have a new album from ACDC. And I think that really hurt the sales of this album. And I don't think that was a good idea by the record company. But unfortunately, that's what they played with. To me, I really like this album better than Back in Black. I think the songs on here are better. I think uh, the production is Robert Mutt Lane again, so it's always going to be top-notch. There's three albums in a row where they had Mutt Lane produce, and you can tell. I mean, the, the, they're just gorgeous-sounding albums. And But I really like this album a lot. There's so much good on here. Uh, let's get it up. Put the Finger on You, COD, Evil Walks, uh, the title track, obviously everyone knows the title track for those about to rock, we salute you. Just Inject the Venom, I mean, so much good on this album, that's one of my favorites from ACDC. So for those about to rock, this is the original 1981 issue. I found this in a store, still sealed, and had to pick it up, and I opened it up because I wanted to confirm that what I had was an original press and it is so very excited about that but I also have 
the 2003 reissue as well. So it's kind of cool to have both of them. Everything's the same except the back. On the 2003 reissue, the songs are listed in the proper order. On the 2000 or 1981 original press, they're listed in, I think, alphabetical order. That brings us to 1983's Flick of the Switch, an album that many people don't like, and I just don't understand that. This is a fabulous album. I think people were used to, at the time, the production quality and style of Robert Lane, and they didn't really get that with this. This was back to ACDC producing their own albums, and it's much more raw, gritty, power uh, it's it's great I think um, and the songs on here are absolutely awesome I don't know why people give it so much flack and I think it's just because they think the quality of the production wasn't as good but if you want true ACDC and you want that 70s sound again from your let there be rocks and and all that this is the album right here this goes back to that style and it's produced I th thought very well really enjoy this album 1983 flick of the switch 1985, Fly on the Wall. Another album that people just don't allow themselves to listen to because the sound quality and the production quality isn't up to par for what many people think it should be. And I got to say, I agreed at a time with them on this, but the songs on this album are just so good, so great. This is probably one of my favorite of the Brian Johnson era um, for song-wise, just because I think they have great tunes on here. Um, I remember in 2003 when they did the remasters and getting the remaster fly on the wall on CD it was so much better than the original sound that they had on fly on the wall that where the vocals sounded like they were you know just over reverbed and, and done in a tin can they clean that up a lot but I will tell you this the vinyl this is the original press vinyl from 1985 it's a club edition but it sounds great. Uh, it doesn't sound as badly produced as what I grew up with on the CD. So I think they mixed it really well and mastered it really well for the vinyl and just didn't do a good job with the CD transfer when the, everything moved over to CDs. I'm not sure what the problem was, but I think it sounds really good on vinyl. And I don't have a 2003 repress. I plan to get one because I'd love to hear how different it sounds than the original press here. But for now, I think this sounds great. I think it's an overlooked album and a fantastic album from the Brian Johnson era. And I could recommend this to anyone who liked the songs from Flying the Wall but didn't like the production. The vinyl sounds good, so don't hesitate to pick that up if you do see it in the wild. Great album. Who Made Who? This is considered the soundtrack to the Stephen King movie Maximum Overdrive. Um, and that's basically what it is. You've got uh, three songs that are brand new you know, with two of them instrumentals, Chase the Ace and um, DT. And then, of course, the title track, Who Made Who, is brand new on this. Everything else comes from previous albums. Now, a funny story about this album is that I remember uh, when I first got into ACDC, it was from the Razor's Edge album, which we'll get to in a minute. And I had only known the Brian Johnson voice. And I picked up uh, Who Made Who from somewhere. And I listened to it all the way through. And I remember getting to the song Ride On. And I was like, wow, I didn't know Brian Johnson could sing like that. At the time, there was no internet or anything like that around. So I had no clue that ACDC had a singer prior to Brian Johnson. Well, I found out very quickly after that about the Bon Scott era and started buying albums from there. I believe the first Bon Scott album that I ended up getting was High Voltage. But anyway, that was my introduction to Bon Scott was on this album. It's a cool little compilation. Some people call it a greatest hits. I wouldn't call it that because it doesn't have the greatest hits on there, but it has some good songs. You should be on that lawn on here. What I really love about the uh, LP version is that the version of Shake Your Foundations is not the same as the version that went on the fly on the wall. So you have two different versions of Shake Your Foundations. The CD is the same on both, but the cassette and the vinyl have different versions of the song. And I think that's kind of cool. 1988 Blow Up Your Video, ACDC. 
awesome album, if you ask me. Another one that suffers from poor vocal production on here. I think the guitars sound great. I think the bass and the drums sound great. But for some reason, I'm not sure what it was, they did this one in Vancouver, and uh, something about the vocal track, it sounds like they over-processed and over-reverbed it, and it really loses some of the quality. And I think that's turned a lot of people off to this album. But this album has a lot of really, really good songs on it. Um, some of my favorites, including Go Zone, uh, you obviously Heat Seeker and I want, uh, That's the Way I Want to Rock and Roll are the big tunes that they played on tours with them. Um, Two's Up is one of my favorites. And Nick of Time. I mean, great tunes on here. And the vinyl sounds much better than the CD. It's still got problems with vocal tracks, but it does sound better than the CD. And I'm able to listen to it. This is an original pressing from 1988, also a club edition. Uh, but happy to have this love this album and i think people need to give it a little more thought and listen and especially go back and and this one got the 2003 remasters and it cleaned it up a little bit but it's still not great i just don't think they had a good vocal takes on here to kind of clean them up any better than they are but still a good album awesome listen if you like acdc give it a shot because it's it's good ah here we go this is the album that got me started on ACDC, thanks to my buddy Nate, who introduced this to me. Uh, love, love, love this album. It's fantastic. This is my original press that I bought in 1990. Um, I got it from a Columbia house order where I decided for some reason, I don't know why, to get the vinyl instead of the CD. Probably because I already had the CD and I thought, well, I'll get the vinyl too. And it sat around forever because I, I, I had a little record player growing up and I listened to it on that. But then for a long time, I didn't have a record player. And it sat in storage, went through moves, all sorts of stuff. You can see the damage from a flood. It got the cover. It got stuck to my Skid Row self-titled album. And Skid Row kind of peeled off on here. I was able to clean it up quite a bit recently to get some of that stuff off of the cover. But uh, the vinyl's in great condition, so I can't complain there. But I also decided just a couple weeks ago that I needed to get... A new copy and this is the 2003 repress uh, of the album and um, I just needed to have a nice clean cover as well so I bought it it was on sale and I just picked it up great album Razor's Edge 1996 ball breaker um, great album. oh I should mention too uh, before that we had ACDC live which is hanging on my wall uh, 1991 I believe 92 something like that I remember when this first came out I bought this deluxe CD package it came with an Angus Young uh, dollar bill that they would drop during money talks during the concerts that they did it had oh gosh all sorts of stuff in there just really cool package a poster of Rosie all sorts of stuff so I really really like that that's my favorite ACDC live album just because that's what I grew up with and I know it so well Great album. But then we have 96's Ball Breaker. This is the 2003 remaster issue of the album. Another really solid album from ACDC that I think because we were in the grunge era, didn't get enough airplay. But you've got some good stuff on here. Heart as a Rock is awesome. You've got Burning Alive, which I think is a highly underrated ACDC song, one of the best that they've done. Um, you've got uh, Caught With Your Pants. Now, Ball Breaker is a fantastic tune as well. Just awesome album i recommend this to anyone who kind of gave up on acdc after razor's edge to go out and find this album because this is really good so there you go i hope uh i hope people give this more of a look because i think it's a fantastic album 1996 ball breaker 2000 and or 2000 or 2001 2000 stiff upper lip gosh i remember when this song came out the title track came out to this and being just excited as I'll get up. Love Stiff Upper Lip, the song. Love the track. This is an interesting album because it's not your typical ACDC album. They took some chances here and did a lot more bluesy and jazzy type tunes on here, which I think is kind of cool. This is a fabulous album. It's different from most ACDC albums, which I think gives it a, a, a cool vibe and a cool feel. But you've got some great stuff on here. Stiff Upper Lip is awesome, as, as everyone knows. Can't Stand Still, uh, Hold Me Back, 
Can't Stop Rock and Roll, Satellite Blues, um, just really cool stuff on this album. So this is a 2003 repress of this as well. Um, just awesome. Really enjoyed this one. 2008, you can see we're getting long between years on ACDC releases. This was like kind of a comeback album for ACDC. They hadn't been doing a whole lot. They did a bunch of touring and then just kind of disappeared. You saw them pop up in, in I believe, 2003 with the Rolling Stones at a show. A Angus and Malcolm came on stage with them. It was kind of weird. And then 2008, suddenly we were told there's going to be a new album. And that's this one, Black Ice. And what I love about this one is this was the tour that I was finally able to see ACDC in person in concert. Uh, my buddy Nate and I hit the Excel Energy Center uh, when they came to town, saw them live, and uh, it was a bucket list item for me. I was super excited. I didn't know if this would be the last ACDC album we'd ever get or not. So I had to, to spend, it cost me like a hundred bucks, I think, to go to the show, but well worth the money. Amazing concert. Also, the last time Malcolm Young was with the band as far as uh, touring goes. So that was kind of uh, fortunate for me to be able to see that. Great. Um, this is this is a good album, um, but it's not my favorite. And the reason is, I think they have too much here. They were gone for so long that they decided to put 15 tracks on this album. And I think at ACDC, their best idea is no more than 10 tracks on, a, on an album. Um, there might be exceptions here and there, but to me, you get the best of ACDC when you just hold it to that. This one has a lot of tracks on there, and some of them I just don't understand or really get. Stormy May Day, it's a cool little bluesy song where he's got some slide guitar, but it's not ACDC, and I don't think it needed to be on here. Um, just a couple of those kind of tracks, Smash and Grab, Spoiling for a Fight, just songs that do nothing for me. There's a lot of really good stuff on here, too. Um, there's uh, Rock and Roll Dream. Uh, rockin' all the all the way, rock and roll train, uh, anything goes, Big Jack. And those are all good songs that I really like, but I think it's hard for me to go through and listen to this in one sitting because it's just so much. Also, a good album, but just a lot of ACDC here. Live at River Platte, another live album, and um, I didn't get this for a long, long time. But I really wanted to get it because of the song Dog Eat Dog is on here. And that is an, a Bon Scott era song that I'd never heard uh, Brian Johnson sing. And so I wanted to get it. They did a lot of cool stuff on this, this release because uh, they put songs on here that they didn't normally do in concert all the time. So I, I, ha I finally got it. And it's really good. It's really good. It doesn't hold up to me to the other two live albums. But it's still a fun listen, and it's got a good variety of different songs on here, which I really liked about it. So this is Live at River Platte, and I believe uh, this came out on the Black Ice Tour. So this would have been uh, 2000. This one says 2012 on it, so we'll go with that. But I think it might be 2009 or 10. That brings us to the latest uh, release from ACDC. This is called... Rocker Bust. Fabulous, fabulous album. Uh, I remember I got an advanced copy of this album from a buddy who's a huge ACDC fan, so I got to listen to it before it was actually released. Man, what a great album. What a great album. This is what I mean when I say, you know, keep it down to about 10 songs. There are exactly 10 songs on, I think, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11. There's 11 songs on this album. And I don't think there's a single filler song on it. I love every track on this. I listen to it front to back all the time. It's only, I think, about 40 minutes. It's a really short album for having that many songs. But everything's so good on here. This was, I think, a fantastic uh, release. And I was happy that I went up to Fargo to meet my buddy. And we went and saw the concert for this tour live and it ended up being one of the last of the concerts by Brian Johnson before he was kind of removed from the band because of hearing problems and Axel then took over for him so I was happy that I was able to see one of the last concerts that Brian did with them on this tour and uh, but this is great if you haven't heard this album and you like ACDC 
you're doing yourself a disservice by not getting this. This is awesome. So great album, ACDC, Rock or Bust. It's just fabulous. Highly recommend that. And last but not least is a bootleg that I picked up at a store. I saw it um, at, I think, down in the valley here in Minnesota. And I thought, well, what is this? I sent a message to my buddy, and he said, it's a pretty good recording. And so I said, okay, I'll get it. It's a radio recording bootleg. Uh, and it's called uh, Live uh, Live at Old Waldorf in San Francisco, KSGA-FM. Um, it's very raw, very raw, uh, but it's good. It's fine. Um, it's kind of cool to have in my collection, so I bought that. It's uh, from 1977, so before we had um, Power Edge was released. But the cool part is, is they do songs from Power Edge. You got Kicked in the Teeth and Up to My Neck and You from Power Edge are on this album. So that was kind of fun. That was before they were even released on on CD, or on on a record. They were put on this little live show. So very cool, fun little album. And that completes my ACDC record collection. I could bust out a whole bunch of CDs because I have um, most of their albums on original uh, original pressing CDs and of course the 2003 remasters and um, I don't think I have a cassette anymore I lost all most of my cassettes a long time ago and so I don't think I have anything on cassette anymore but if you want to see a really cool ACDC collection go to acdc-bootlegs.com that's my buddy Nate's website and you can find a whole bunch of cool stuff he's got Lots of different albums, uh, original press albums that he's collected up from all sorts of different countries. He's got cassette tapes all over the, from all over the world. He's got CDs from all over the world. He's got eight tracks from all over the world. And then he's got a large collection of bootleg concerts. Uh, that's kind of what he's into. And so biggest ACDC fan I know by far. And he's got videos, you know, cassettes, DVDs, eight tracks, vinyls, CDs anything you can imagine and a ton of memorabilia and he listed all there in his collection highly recommend it acdc-bootlegs.com it's really fun to go visit that so that'll do it for this episode i hope you enjoyed the artist spotlight i know this is a really long episode and I, we went way longer than i'd like to go however um this is my favorite band and i have everything that i can at this time for them in the future, these will be a lot shorter because most of my artist collections aren't going to be as deep as the ACDC one is. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of this concept. Do uh, you want me to do another one? I've got a couple artists in mind to do these on. Um, so let me know in the comments below if it's something you're interested in. If not, you know, we'll move on to something else down the road and figure something else out to do. But if you like it, great. Thank you. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel if you don't already. Thank you for watching, and until next time, keep spinning vinyl, friends.